Good morning. This quick video is going to be uh, Turner's Cube using OpenSCAD. And this is going to be one of those examples examples of where uh, you know a script-based CAD might be quite a bit easier than a non-script based or, or you know or a GUI based uh, CAD program. So to start out with we're going to we're going to start by changing the um, the detail level with the FN command. Um, we're just going to set it to 50 and for this we're going to do uh, four cubes okay and the first cube is going to be a 10 unit cube now in open open scad um, it's not millimeters or inches it's just units so whatever the program you're using later will determine what the one unit or 10 units is so you'll see that puts a cube uh, starting at the origin now, to make the whole thing easier and with less calculations, we're going to just center this cube. So we do that by typing in center true, and now you see that cube is centered. Um, so to add to or to subtract what would be um, the, the turns, we're going to do we're going to use uh, cylinders, and. With the first cube uh, being 10, we're going to do a nine, nine millimeter cylinder, so the radius is going to be 4.5. Now, you don't have to put the R in, you can just do, uh, there, there's multiple ways to enter in these coordinates. Um, I like to do the R and the H for this so that it's easier to understand in a tutorial. Um, so what you'll see right away is that cube isn't exactly right where you want it. Um, Although it looks like it's centered, it's not because it's um, it's actually st you know starts at zero zero and the radius sweeps around that origin. So when we do centered true, you'll see it centers it the rest of the way. So the whole object is going to be centered, even though it looked like it was centered before it wasn't. Um, the object's origin started at zero zero zero. So we're going to need. Um, we're going to need three total, and, and here's where I like OpenSCAD better than FreeCAD, because if I want another object, it's really easy to copy it, whereas it's a little bit more difficult in, um, in FreeCAD. So now, uh, for, for the next two, we need to, we need to rotate those, and that's, and that's accomplished simply with a rotate command. And I like to fill these in first and then put my values. Um, I don't know why, it just feels easier to me. And you'll see that that'll rotate the one cylinder, and then sort of, and um, to rotate the next one, all I've got to change is one of the values. And you know, this is the kind of thing where I really like scripting, is you can make big changes with just a cop with you know with copy commands, and co you know copying on the fly. So to remove the cylinder from our object, we use the difference command. Uh, and even though it has the ability to accept parameters, we don't need any in this case. But what the difference command does is it, it takes the first object received, in this case the cube, and subtracts everything after that. And it's ev everything after that gets subtracted. Um, and difference command needs to be in bra bracketed. So you can see that's the first, first layer of our Turner's cube. And I know this is probably, you know, technically not the way a Turner's cube would be formed. But uh, the result is going to, you know, it wouldn't be formed this way on the machine because if you removed all the material in the middle, you wouldn't have, much, you wouldn't have anything left. But fortunately, we can, um, with CAD, we can add back. So here's where the real power of op OpenSCAD comes. So for my next cube, I want it to be um, one millimeter smaller than what was removed. So that's going to be eight. So I'm going from 10 cube and then a radius of nine to the next cube of radius of eight. And I want, um, the radius of these cylinders to be seven, or the, I'm sorry, the diameter would be seven, one less than the eight. So the radius will be 3.5, and guess what? We have our next cube, that fast. You know, in, you know, uh, in FreeCAD, I would have had to define another cube, and I would have had to do, done sketches and pockets and, and everything on that. So this, this one I want to be six, and I want, to, I want the, um, the, the circle inside that to be five, so it's going to be 2.5, and there's our next cube, and let's do the last one. 
And for fun, I'm going to name this Why Free Cad Sucks, just to hopefully maybe be clickbait. I don't know if it will be or not. So for our little cube in here, we do a 1.5. Okay. So there's your Turner's cube. Just that quick and that easy. Um, um, you know, once you know Free Cad, uh, that's much easier than, or once you know Open Open Scad, that's much easier than than a um, than the Free Cad process. Um, and we're going to call this Turner's Cube Basic because we're going to do another one real quick. So there's that, and we're going to the new one is going to be uh, we're going to do Turner's Cube Parametric. So, so this was shows you the power of, of scripting a CAD. Now I'm going to show you the power, the real power of a scripting CAD. Let's get rid of all those because we only need one. We only need one definition and some variables. So, what we need to define is what the cube we're going to, what the cube is going to start at, um, the cube size that we're going to stop at. So we're going to go from a two millimeter cube to a ten millimeter cube, and and the, the steps in between the cubes because we're going to create a for loop. Now this is probably not the only the only way you could do your for loop, but this is going to work out. So the the for loop is defined is is going to go through this loop and it's going to change this variable size uh, cube size based on these parameters. So it'll the first time it goes through the loop, it'll set the start to two. The second and then it'll step through. Uh, so it'll change the start value to the cube size will go up by the step value, which is 2. And then when it reaches the stop value, 10, the loop will exit. So that's ba basic program control there. And the four loops, whatever you're going to be looping is, is defined within the bracket. So we're going to bracket this. And then we're going to just change the cube size here to, guess what, cube size. And then we're going to change the radius. This is so. This is a little. This is where it gets a little bit more thoughtful. So the radius is going to be the cube size. And for this, for this one, it's going to be minus one. And that's something you could you could uh, create. Make that parameter parameterized. I don't know why I have trouble with that word, but I do. So that'll create a radius that's one millimeter smaller than the cube. So if you wanted to, you, you, know, you could pa parameterize this value to, uh, to change that. So we're gonna need to, so because we're using center, we're gonna want the height to change as well with each one. So we're just gonna do cube size plus two. It could, you could do 12 plus two, but this'll keep the, um, this'll keep the cylinder the same size as Seems you know similar size to the cube, but not that it really matters. So, and again, here's the value of, of you know scripting is I can just change that second object. I don't you know I don't have to dink around in the GUI to find out where the heck I change all these values and where I put all these formulas, which can you know can be cumbersome. So I think that's it. Let me check it out. Okay, I think that's it. So let's try to render this and see what happens. Okay, it didn't look like it changed much because I didn't update my drawing. So, but you saw it added that one in there. Um, so let's make it really obvious the change. And we're gonna, so we're gonna do uh, 10 cubes, and end at 20 millimeters. And you see, bam! It's just that simple. So now, uh, like him. So maybe we want to start at 10 and end at 20. You know, so that's that shows you the value of um, of how you know of how powerful the 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 um, open scat can be. Say we want a solid block, solid cube in the middle. We'll just do a cube of a cube the size of 10. Center equals true. So that puts it at the center of the cube at 0, 0, 0. And done. Now we've got, you know, what would be left if you were if you were really turning this, or what, you know, a closer resemblance of what would be left if you were really turning this. And uh, that's it. Uh, thumbs up if you like it feel free to subscribe. Thank you.